Hi, welcome back to our kitchen. Now, first of all, I need to tell you I am not a baker, but I, I'm trying new things. So instead of savory today, I'm going to do a pineapple upside down cake, gluten free, dairy free. Now, um, the reason behind this is it sounded really good. My husband loves it. I used to make it with a cake mix. I believe it was Duncan Hines that had a pineapple cake mix. And then I'd make it in my cast iron skillet in the uh, oven. Well, I don't know how much this batter is going to make, so we're going to use a butt pan today. Let me show you how it goes. Today I'm showing you a recipe I got online. Uh, it's gluten-free, dairy-free, and I don't have a link to the lady that was on there because her link is no longer there. So I'm, I'm going to, kind of going to copycat, but I'm going to add more stuff to it. So what we want to do is we want to put our... All I had today was crushed pineapple because, of course, you know we're in a crisis right now and we use what we have. So I'm using a 20-ounce can of crushed pineapple. So I took the pineapple and I drained it because I want this pineapple juice for the uh, wet ingredients. So I'm going to layer this in around the bunt pan. Go around. And if you see me looking at a recipe, I apologize. I just don't have bakery recipes on the top of my head. Because like I say, baking to me is like making a gigantic mess. Because I have flour everywhere. So what I did today is I measured everything out first. Now we're going to take brown sugar and sprinkle that around in here. And you can go and buy a yellow cake mix. I believe Betty Crocker has one. Uh, Pamela's Gluten-Free Baking Goods has one. And that would be fine. Just follow the um, cake directions on the back of it. But I, I decided to use the um, homemade method. Next we want to add one stick of butter. Now, as you all know, with dairy-free, you can't use real butter. So what I did is I took my substitute country crock olive oil plant butter. And I know it's going to turn out good. Put that in there. Next, we've got the cherries. And I'm going to put that in here. Hopefully towards the bottom where they'll show up. So I'm going to poke them with my finger into the batter. Now my cherries had stems on it, which I prefer for cocktails. But I had to take the stems off for this recipe. cherry juice. Now for my dry ingredients we're using Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour gluten-free and I like this very much for everything. So what I did is I sifted uh, three and a half cups of um, the, the flour Two and a half cups, I'm sorry. Two and, a, two and a half cups of flour. And then over here I have a quarter cup of, one and a quarter cup of sugar. Can't read my own writing. And then a teaspoon of salt, three and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Now, with gluten free flour, they suggest when you measure it out, you spoon it out of the container into your measuring cups. And the reason for that is they want you to keep it fluffy. And um, 
So I do that, and also I've already sifted that, and that lightens it, it up a lot. And uh, I did sift the sugar, but... Pudding? I'll get it, babe. Okay. I'm not trying to hit it. That's okay. She used a package of vanilla jello pudding. Now I have banana also in my pantry. So whatever you have, you can use. Banana would be interesting. I just wouldn't use chocolate. I don't know. I made a chocolate pineapple upside down cake and it was not a hit. Now it looks like I'm using a lot of paper bowls and wasting it. Well, I'm not wasting it because these good bowls that have the wax coating on it, you can rinse it out with water and it's good to go for your next use. I don't know if people knew that before. I'm sure they did. So I'm putting this all together with my whisk. Now, I'm going to have to start on my wet ingredients. They want you to do half a cup of pineapple juice, which I've strained off of my pineapple. Put that in there. That's almost one cup, but it doesn't matter. Now, milk. As, you're, as you know, if you're dairy free, you cannot drink cow's milk or anything like that. So what happened was, I like Almond Breeze, and I usually get the unflavored, but I accidentally picked the vanilla flavoring off the shelf. And um, so I'm gonna use that you're supposed to put a, a teaspoon of vanilla in the recipe. So I'm going to use vanilla almond milk. Whoops, I just made it two cups. Let me see what it says. Whoops. That's why I don't bake. Let me pour some of this off. I just need a cup of this. Of course, being left-handed, the instructions are on the other side. Don't you just love it? I'm going to add this to the mixture and then I have the vanilla pudding and an oil. What I'm using instead of vegetable, vegetable oil or canola oil is coconut oil. Now you get a jar of it at the grocery store and it looks solid white. You take the lid off of it, put it in the microwave. microwave. I did this for 30 seconds I believe, maybe a little bit more. And this is refined coconut oil, which means you're not going to taste coconut at all. At least I don't. And you put the oil in there. Now for the vanilla, I'm going to skip that because I have almond, I mean vanilla milk in there. And I'm going to add a teaspoon of almond extract. I love almond extract. There we go. Okay, let me make sure I have everything because I'm kind of goofy when it comes to baking. Flour, sugar, baking powder, salt. Salt was in with the sugar. Pineapple, half a cup of pineapple juice, half, and then you top it off with almond milk. Um, vanilla pudding, oil. Now the eggs. Um, this is when I'm going to get noisy. I'm going to start mixing this all together. And I apologize for it. some dry things on the bottom but I'm going to add three eggs one at a time so let's do that right now whoops I got two in there so let's mix it up
the last egg goes in. It really smells good. Let me scrape the bowl down to make sure I got all the dry ingredients on the bottom. Yeah, I got a lot of gadgets. I like gadgets. Okay, it looks pretty good. Did you see how I lifted the beaters up out of the batter? That way it uh, takes the big uh, bunch of batter off the... <laughs> this is a new mixer. I don't know how. There's one. Uh, I'll get it later. Sorry, I got to go wash my hands. Another thing about gluten-free flour is they suggest you let it sit for a while. I didn't know that until I made some cupcakes one day and I forget what was going on. Oops, made it. <laughs> um, forget what was going on, but like now I have to heat the oven up and uh, to 350 degrees so that will ensure that this batter will sit for a while. And it just lets the dry soak into the liquids and that uh, makes it a little bit better for some reason they say to rest your flour so I'm gonna put the batter in around the tube I apologize for not uh, being a good baker. Well, I shouldn't apologize for that. I just never got into it. When I was a kid, I really didn't cook with anybody or bake with anybody. Um, so I had to learn it all later on. And I make some good cupcakes gluten-free. But I don't like to make a whole cake. Because if you get the cupcakes, you could put them in a plastic bag and even freeze them for later. That way they don't go, go stale on you because gluten-free baking tends to go stale really quick. So I like making cupcakes. Spread the batter around. I'm going to bake this on 350 degrees for 33 to 36 minutes. And I think you all know how to put a toothpick in it. If the 33 minutes come up and you put a toothpick in it and it comes up kind of wet, bake it till the 36. If it's still not the way you want it, still wet, the ideal what you want it is a dry toothpick when you bring it out of the cake. So I'm going to be back in a little bit to show you how this cake turned out. Hi, we finally got our cake baked. Now, the thing of it is, is you know when a cake's baking and you're 36 minutes or I actually went 35 minutes or over, and then you stick the toothpick in there, it came out wet. And like there was still batter in there. So then I let it go another 10 minutes. Still came out with some stuff on the toothpick. 
another 10 minutes. This is what you have to do to judge. And then you might want to write that down on your recipe. Took this many minutes to cook cake. Um, so by the time I did that, the toothpick came out clean. Because you want it to come out clean with no batter, no, just maybe a crumb or so on it. So what I'm going to attempt to do is to turn this over on this plate and see if it will come out. Bear with me. Cross your fingers. I gotta get my hands underneath it. This is a heavy cake. <laughs> okay, one, two. I don't know if I can do this. Ouch. Do it this way. Okay, baby. Ta-da! Isn't that pretty? So now, by rights, we need to let this cool down. Gluten-free batter is not good if you don't let it cool down to almost room temperature. So I'm not going to cut into it today. I just wanted to show you how it came out. I think it's beautiful for my attempt of baking. Maybe I'll cut into it. Let me see. Let me get a spatula. Oh, oh here it is. My little one. My little spatula. Right here. Okay, I'm going to cut into it. Take the gloves off. Can you see that? That came out pretty nice. Maybe I'll taste it. Just to let you know what it tastes like. Hope it's not too hot. A little bit of cherries, a little bit of pineapple. Tastes really good, but really gluten-free bakery should cool down to room temperature before you attempt to eat it. Because it tends to be doughy. Once it, once it sets, it seems to uh, thicken up. So I really appreciate you being here today with me. I'd love you to subscribe and add a comment if you have any questions. Go to mynanasapron at gmail.com. And I'll see you next time. Bye.